Hey everyone, it's Joe again, and today I wanted to tell you how I saved around $2,500 when putting together my garage gym. Now, I wanted to recognize that when buying gym equipment for your home gym, it's probably a good idea to buy used, as it saves you a lot of money. However, during our current situation, the pandemic, buying used equipment becomes, number one, a little more risky, and number two, probably a lot more expensive when buying off of like, let's say Craigslist. You can see there's plenty of price gouging going on. When you're buying from Craigslist, there's probably a little less chance of having contactless pickup when versus when you're buying from, let's say, uh, retail. Uh, so at this point, maybe buying new equipment is actually a decent option. When buying new equipment, you're probably gonna have to deal with, number one, they're gonna go out of stock very often. Uh, number two, they don't restock very often. So you're, going to have to be a little more strategic and a little more decisive when buying gym equipment. And hopefully this video will try to help you do that to determine what's truly necessary and what's a little less necessary and probably you can live without and then therefore save a bit of money. If you have infinite money and you have plenty of room in your house, then this these tips are probably not for you. Uh, these tips work for me because I'm definitely on a budget and I don't have infinite space, so I need to be thinking about what I really, really, really need for all my workouts and what I can just ultimately live without and skip on and save a little bit of money. One last thing to note, uh, all of the prices for shipping and handling and uh, taxes, they're gonna be for California because that's where I am. So let's get started. First thing that I did to save a little bit of money was when I determined that I needed a rack, I bought a squat rack instead of a power rack. And you can see the details of how I made that decision in an earlier video that I made. Um, so the basic idea was that I didn't, really didn't need the stability and all the other various functionalities of the power rack. So I went with a basic squat rack. And for Rogue Fitness, the difference between a Monster Light squat rack and a Monster Light power rack, the price difference is around $325. And one more interesting thing to note is that when I bought the squat rack, the shipping and handling for California, again, was actually only $50, around $50. When uh, I put the power rack into the cart and calculated shipping and handling for the power rack uh, alone, that costs around $200. So in reality, you only save just $325. You save uh, you know, an additional $150 and then $325 plus a little bit of tax as well. So it goes into almost like the $500 range when you just buy a squat rack. Hi guys, looks like I accidentally deleted my tip number two, so here it is. I don't buy kettlebells. I tend not to do kettlebell exercises, and when I do, I can just use my dumbbells and my grip plates, so that kind of works out for me. I know it might be a little inconvenient, but again, it saves a decent amount of money, especially if you're gonna buy four to five kettlebells from let's say 13 to 62 pounds. That can vary anywhere up to like 325 to $350. So save that money. It is a little inconvenient, but if you can live without it, then save money. So third tip, and probably the most important because I saved the most money on it, is when buying dumbbells, I only bought in increments of 10 instead of increments of five. So I only bought, let's say 30, 40, 50, 60, instead of 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and so on and so forth. So that saved me about half an entire rack of dumbbells, right? It's a little inconvenient when I need to move up in weight. Um, sure, I don't get the actual like slow increase of five pounds per hand, but that only knocks down my reps to maybe, let's say worst case half, of the number of reps of the next weight down. And I can put up with that little bit of inconvenience um, and just continue to rep out the, the higher weight and train it up to, let's say 10 or 12 before I move on to the next higher increment. And for the amount of money that I saved, it's actually uh, pretty darn worth it because a full uh, Rogue Fitness Hex uh, dumbbell rack. It's around $2,700 without tax and without shipping and handling. When you cut that almost in half, um, I probably only spent 
maybe around $1,200 so far. I haven't bought, you know, all the way up to 100 yet, but I, you know, one day I plan to, but well, still in increments of 10. The other thing is you also have to um, account for when you buy dumbbells that you'll probably, if you have grip plates already and you have, let's say, a barbell already, maybe you don't need that 45 pound dumbbell or that 25 pound dumbbell because certain exercises you can probably just use your 25 pound grip plate or your 45 pound grip plate or even the barbell. That's a couple of things to take into consideration, especially when you're trying to save money on probably the biggest money sink at this point because you can go into many, many increments. And the as I said, the total probably comes out with shipping and handling and taxes probably almost around like $3,000, over $3,000 easily. As a follow-up to the previous tip, so tip number four now, um, I don't buy weight increments under 25 pounds. And the reason why is uh, once you get to that low of the weight increments, you potentially run into other things in the household that weigh about the same. So let's say laundry deter deter detergent or a uh, gallon of water. A gallon of water is about eight pounds, a little over eight pounds. Uh, laundry detergent, depending on the bottle, can get up to around 12 pounds. So all these types of things uh, household items could assist you in your workouts without having to spend additional money on these weights. Now you'd think that the lower weights, sure, they cost a little less, but the increments that you can get under 25 pounds is actually a lot more than 25 pounds and up. Because 25 pounds and up, at worst, you probably get like the five uh, pound increments. However, when you go below you get to 2.5 pound increments, or you get into those yoga weights, which are like two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 pounds. You could potentially go into a rabbit hole of buying all those increments and really not get much out of it because the variation in weight is, for certain exercises, it's not noticeable. And again, there's just so much other stuff that you could use as those weights. If you don't buy, let's say the 22 and a half, 20s, 17.5s, 15s, 12.5s, 10s, and so on and so forth, you can, you can actually save a lot of money because all of those combined, and you're going to get a pair, of course, a pair of dumbbells per, all those can get up to around 200 pounds total, 200 pounds total. And then of course, when you're buying weights, it's about the multiplier is around $1.25 uh, per pound. So you can easily get up to like 250 pounds or 250 dollars just in these small increment low weights and to me that's just plainly not worth it save up for the less common weights that you really can't duplicate or if you can find that weight it would be extremely inconvenient for you to lift without a decent handle so save your money for those the other reason why i don't buy those lower weight increments in dumbbells is because before the pandemic those weights were pretty common in terms of just random weights you had lying around the house. At least my family did. We had a pair of 10s and then we bought uh, an 8 and a 6 single dumbbells. And then I had a 12 pounder from college that one of my roommates just didn't want anymore. And I didn't think that it was really useful either because I went to the gym before. Now that I am starting a uh, home gym. The 12 pounder is just sitting here and it, it came into use. Um, so I use it for a few things, but again, I felt like it was pretty common to just have certain, these smaller weights lying around as well. So try to look into those options before you go out and buying, buy a fresh new set of weights. Last thing that I did to save a little bit of money when buying weights was really simple. Don't buy 35 pound plates, whatever they are, whether it's grip plates or bumper plates. The combination of, let's say, a 25 pound plate and a 10 pound plate is infinitely more useful than a singular 35 pound plate. And the only time that I can think of that you would need a 35 pound plate is if you had loaded this bar with, um, let's say the grip plate is around one and a half to two inches. You would load this with, let's say, eight 45 pound plates, you would get up to, let's say that that's, that's around like 600, 700 pounds. And then you wanted to mount one more plate onto here and you just needed the 35 pounder, but you 35 pounds additional, 
but you can't fit the 10 pound and the 25 pound on. And so you need that singular 35 pound plate. But for those of us who can't deadlift and squat, you know, 800 pounds, that's probably not going to be a real concern. Buy a 25 and 10 and skip the 35. 35 pair is around 100 bucks. So if you skip on that, you save, you know, the shipping and handling as well, you save maybe 120 bucks. So guys, that's how I saved around $2,500 when assembling my home gym. It can be argued that these tips aren't really uh, saving money uh, because the, the items weren't discounted or they weren't on sale or anything, um, or I didn't get them for a deal. Uh, these are more like uh, optimized buying strategies. Even though I saved $2,500, I didn't actually get the additional $2,500 of those items but i felt like i didn't need that extra two thousand five hundred dollars of value in my gym because the existing equipment that i already bought had some of that value in it already so i avoided buying an additional two thousand five hundred dollars worth of stuff these these strategies may or may not work out for you uh they helped me um, while I was trying to calculate how much I actually really wanted to spend on the gym. Hopefully this helps you guys in your future buys and if you guys like this video please like and subscribe and I will have more content weekly. Thanks!